Uh, good evening, everyone. Very nice to meet you all. And thank you very much for this opportunity to pitch to you and for agreeing to let a complete stranger talk to you about soil for six minutes. It's about five minutes longer than my family have ever let me talk to them about soil for, so I'm, I'm going to make the most of it. Um, starting with a little bit of background about me, um, I actually started my career in Brussels, working in the European Parliament and the European Commission, and then as a lobbyist representing businesses and NGOs on a number of keystone pieces of environmental policy, waste, water, air pollution, uh, etc. Now, looking back, it's really noticeable that over that period, the issue of soil rarely, if ever, cropped up. Or if it did, it tends to be as a footnote, an afterthought, almost always the final slide and a presentation about the state of our environment. So I, like everyone else, took our souls for granted. That is, until 2017, when I met the founders of the SSA, Neville and Ellen Fay, shortly before the organization launched, and realized not just how, how important our soils are, but the parlous state they were in and how neglected and misunderstood they were among policymakers, the general public, and even other environmental campaigners. At the SSA, we also saw that Brexit provided an opportunity to right this wrong and to place soil at the heart of our farming and environmental policy. For me personally, it was also an unmissable opportunity to work at the cutting edge of one of the critical unexplored sustainability issues of our age. So why are soils so critical? I'm not going to bore you with statistics, but here are a few snapshots. First of all, 95% of global food supplies are directly or in indirectly produced on soil. Soils store three times as much carbon as is contained in the atmosphere. One teaspoon of soil contains more living organisms than there are people in the world. Soils are home to a quarter of the Earth's biodiversity. And finally, soils play a critical role in absorbing, filtering and storing water. And it was interesting that Chris referred to the importance of river health earlier, and soil management is a vital tool for keeping our streams and our rivers clean. In other words, soils perform a huge number of critical services necessary for all life on Earth, but that ability is under threat from the way we currently use our soil, from how we farm, what we farm, where we farm, and even when we farm. Losing soil fertility, emitting carbon, destroying biodiversity, and polluting our streams and rivers in the process. Now, I don't want to linger on this because if you're in this meeting, it is likely that you are aware of some or all of these challenges. This is partly because in the last few years, souls have experienced something of an unfrozen moment, finally tiptoeing into the public conversation about the state of our environment. Last year alone saw Netflix documentaries, government ministers, musicians, Hollywood celebrities, and inevitably, of course, Jeremy Clarkson, all espousing souls environmental, cultural, and even lifestyle importance. We would go so far as to argue that soil is now mainstream, soil is now cool, and according to one headline, soil is even sexy. At the same time, soil has also become valuable, with major food and drink brands, the English government's sustainable farming incentive, which, as you may know, is part of the, um, the replacement of the common agricultural policy, and a marketplace for soil carbon from offsets and other ecosystem services now paying farmers to improve their soils. Which then begs the question, if soils are suddenly so popular, why the need for an organization like the SSA? The answer is in fact in the question, because this sudden range and diversity of interest in soils bring, it with, it, bring with it a number of technical, scientific, economic, and philosophical questions that will set the policy agenda for soil for decades to come. And it is these questions that set our agenda and keep us awake at night. These questions include, for example, how strict should the regulatory framework for soils be? How to balance public and private payments for soil? What should be the universal metric for soil health that reflects 700, over 700 UK soil types? What role do, you, do major food and drink brands have in achieving healthy soils? And is our soil education currently fit for purpose? So how do we do this? Well, as you may have gathered, we are a small organization, three full-time staff and an intern, and soil is a huge and growing topic. Our approach has always been the following, to convene and coordinate the huge pool of expertise, academic, corporate, NGO, farming and government, and make it add up to more than the sum of its parts. The best way to illustrate this is via this slide, which demonstrates just the snapshot of the organizations that we not only work with, who actually approach us to drive their soils agenda. Ultimately, the measure of our success is the variety and the calibre of the organisation that choose to work with us, 
and who value our neutrality, our convening power, our flexibility, and our responsiveness. Here's a few examples of the kind of day-to-day -day activities that we get involved with. The Tesco WWF partnership, which looks to halve the environmental impact of the UK shopping basket, commissioned us to research the role that major food brands can have on sales policy. A report that led us to launching earlier this month a dedicated industry platform on soil health. Yesterday, we coasted a workshop with the DEFRA Soils team on soils place in the sustainable farming incentive to make sure that policymakers hear firsthand the concerns of campaigners and farmers and can feed, in the, feed these into their policy design. Major scientific institutions, including Cranfield, CEH and James Hutton, sit on our science panel and feed into our government consultation responses. We respond to about one of these a month at the moment. And then finally, leading high profile environmental NGOs like the Soil Association, Sustain and the Wildlife and Countryside Link sit on our advisory board and ask us to feed directly into their own soil specific publications. On their own, these initiatives gradually move the soil issue along the agenda, and we are uniquely positioned to coordinate and connect them, ensuring that the policies that emerge are aligned, coherent, and above all, ambitious. Your support towards our core costs will help us continue this work during what is a narrow but utterly critical window that we have before us, as the next few years will see the foundations of future soils policy, incentivization schemes, regulations, guidance, big brand investments in regenerative farming and a farm carbon marketplace being established. With your help, we can take advantage of this once in a generation, unfrozen moment to bring soils to a place where they are understood, appreciated and valued and take their rightful place alongside air, water and biodiversity as a cornerstone of our environment. Many thanks indeed for listening.